what's gotten us to this place is the, the rug was pulled out from under writers and to a degree actors in the last 10, 15 years. It's the advent of streaming, the golden age of television. One of the first streaming original shows was House of Cards. Spoiler alert, when they pushed Kate Mara in front of that train, it, it seemed like groundbreaking television. And it was fast paced and it, it looked beautiful and it had huge stars. Artistically, it's opened up the world. Maybe there used to be 80 shows in a year. Now you're up to 500, 550 shows in a year. And for writers, it was good because it gave people entry. And a lot of those people were diverse young voices who Hollywood said, oh, you should come out to move to LA or New York, places where the cost of living is extremely high and you have a seat at the table that for years created careers for people. Now, it doesn't exist like that anymore. And what's the difference between a network show and a streaming show? Network is the TV we all grew up with, ABC, NBC, CBS. And it's the season that begins in September and runs 22 episodes and ends in, in May. So that's a, a season, uh, especially for procedurals that everyone knows, like Grey's Anatomy or, or CSI's. TV seasons always began in September. And that had something to do with auto sales, by the way. The new car seasons came out, and they were gonna advertise heavily, so you wanted new TV. The network model worked for a very long time and gave people a stable career. I broke in on Law & Order Criminal Intent. I was on staff there four years, became showrunner there. So you get paid by the episode or by the week. They said you'll, you'll make $15,000, and I thought that was it. I didn't know they meant for every episode. I, I didn't understand what I'd stumbled into. So I was able to make a living, start raising a family in New York. I think those doors have closed now. So the upside of streaming creatively was you didn't have to worry about commercial breaks. If I write an SVU, we have five commercial breaks in an hour of TV. Something has to happen at the end of that act to make sure people come back. Your writing has to conform to the advertising that pays for it. If you write for streaming, you don't have to worry about commercial breaks you get to write a different structure. Maybe it's just an organic three-act structure to an hour. Now you're down to eight episode runs, six episode runs. Shorter seasons where you could arc a story across eight episodes. You can go a little darker, you can go a little deeper. That part of it was great, and writers from movies flock to it, and novels flock to it. But as the episode orders have shrunk, what used to be 40 weeks out of the year that you were working is now 20 weeks. So try having to go from finding one job a year to finding multiple jobs a year to maintain the same status quo that you previously had. It's tough. I don't think anyone's asking to go back to 20 episode seasons, but the stability and the longevity of those jobs is the model that we're asking for and that we think is best for writers and best for the product. Can you explain what's changed, how the writer's room looks different in each model? The function of the writer's room is the exact same. <laughs> like It is a group of writers coming together to break story, to craft a season, and to write episodes of television. When you get your first job writing on a TV show, you're almost always a staff writer, um, which is the lowest level in the room. And then the next rung on the ladder is story editor, from story editor to executive story editor, co-producer, producer, supervising producer, co-executive producer, and then executive producer is the highest, and showrunner, obviously. The creative process is people coming together, having a conversation about, is it a dark comedy, is it one hour, is it a half hour? Breaking story and really writing your whole season. The next phase is production, when you bring all of your crew together, bring all of your actors, grab your directors, and you shoot the TV show. And then the final stage is post-production, when you take that thing you shot, you sit with your editor, turn it into what people see on TV. Broadcast shows kind of used to be the entire TV space. So if you were on a show like Law & Order SVU, or if you were on a show like Friends, your show was being filmed, it was in production concurrently while you were in the writer's room. Writers are going back and forth and really learning the ropes of what it is to produce a TV show. You know, and it might be in the moment when you're watching a scene and an actor might come up to you and say like, this line just isn't working for me. The job of the writer at that moment is to talk to the actor, figure out what isn't working, and write them a new line. The writer is working with the actor at all times. 
He's conjuring the character. He's meeting the actor that was cast and should be there when that actor is giving life to those words. Financially, of course it would cost studios to keep writers on and to pay those extra weeks to keep doing their job. It seems like their favorite place to cut the budget is with writers, robbing them of creativity and robbing them of people training up to be the, the showrunners of future shows. Writers are now being separated from production, employed for fewer weeks. Fewer weeks means less income. And when a show like Game of Thrones costs so much money and takes so much time to, to make, that's a longer period of time between seasons. And so that means these writers have a longer period of time before they are employed again. Story-wise, there is something nice about having all of your episodes written before you start to produce. It really gives you a nice scope of the season. You know where all your locations are going to be. And if something happens in the last episode of your season that you realize there's a nice way to plant early in the season, you can go and play with that episode. On the other hand, not having your writers continue to be there and do the work that happens in production hurts the production and it hurts the writers. There was this staff writer who was on The Bear which is a streaming show on Hulu, and he had a story about how after working in this room, even though it was this critically acclaimed show and they were winning an award, he went to the award show, broke, and had to rent a bow tie. What I thought was so interesting about that story was that it wasn't the pay per se that was the issue in that situation, it was the length of the room. So you went from having 40 weeks of guaranteed work to maybe eight to 10. It is always very difficult to work in our industry. Writers, directors, actors often have long stretches of idle time. Periods where you're either looking for your next job, the next room that you're gonna go right in, or the next feature that you're gonna pitch, residual checks, or what let you do that? Residuals, which are how actors and writers tie themselves over during lean times, have basically been decimated. When TV first began, there was a big strike in 1960, and that strike resulted in writers getting residuals. The reason my network residual is so healthy is because that was negotiated a long time ago when that was the only other way an episode could be rewatched. If you wrote for Friends or Seinfeld, these shows that are on all the time. Every single time it's used, you get a check. The number of runs your show has, the size of the check decreases. The show is generating income for NBC Universal, and so you will see some of that income. Now streaming comes in, and there's a terrible formula based on a percentage of the sale from the studio to the streamer. So it sits on the platform for a year, and you get one check no matter how many times it's watched. Do you write a show for Hulu? It's a, you get paid to write it, and you might see $400 for the next three years, as opposed to a network rerun, which might be, for an hour show, might be $24,000. I have talked to fellow writers who came up years before, and it was the difference between buying a house or not, between sending your kid to school or not, and, and for me, it just seems like this pipe dream of getting residuals for, for the work that I've done. This strike seems to be catching fire because it mirrors the discontent a lot of workers feel about this yawning wage gap between the top and the bottom. And secondarily, um, but correlated, is that it's about the art that we're making. And if we're not given the time and the resources that we need to make good television. You're not gonna have the diversity of voices, the diversity of ideas. I think that we wanna make sure that art isn't coming from only voices who can afford to do this as a job.